What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example. So a company's net income from 2020 to 2023 is shown below over here. So if a company purchased a machine for 36,000 at the end of 2020 and depreciated it straight line for three years to a salvage value of zero, how would the net income be affected each year? What about the cash flow? And we have to assume the machine purchase is not reflected in these net incomes listed over here and that the tax rate is 40. Now, actually, before getting into this, as I mentioned with previous examples, hopefully you're watching this on the website and you already printed out the PDF where this is written out. You don't have to write it out yourself. If you are watching this on YouTube in the description box, there is a link that will take you to the course website. So what's happening is we have this machine that we're buying at the end of 2020. So notice we're given these net incomes here that are happening throughout the years. Remember the income statement, it happens throughout a period of time. We're purchasing the machine at the end of 2020 and then depreciating it straight line, meaning the depreciation is gonna be the same each year for three years to a salvage value of zero. So the depreciation per year is gonna be the initial amount minus the salvage value all over the number of years we're depreciating it. So that would give us 12,000. Right, that's what the depreciation expense is gonna be. And that is not reflected in these net incomes here. So the fact that we're adding an additional expense, we already know that our net income is gonna go down. The question is, adding in this depreciation with the tax rate, how specifically is the net income gonna be affected? What's the new net income going to be? Now this depreciation, notice that it's only gonna happen in 2021, 2022, and 2023. It's not gonna happen in 2020 because we purchased the machine at the end of 2020. All right, so the depreciation is only gonna happen in those years. Now. To show you how this works, I'm actually gonna first show you a simple example and then I'll bring it back to this one. Kinda wanna show you throughout with a whole income statement how this is working. So let's say that we have revenue of $10. And let's say the only expense we have, excluding taxes, is depreciation. And let's say the depreciation is $4. And that's the only expense we have. So we're gonna have earnings before taxes of six. Let's say that our tax rate is the same. Let's say it's 40%. So these are the earnings before taxes, 40% of six is uh, 2.4. And so we'd end up having a net income of 3.6, like that. So let's say that's the initial income statement right there. Now let's say the new income statement, what's gonna happen is the revenue is gonna stay the same, nothing's gonna change but the depreciation. So instead of having a depreciation of four, we're gonna increase the depreciation to be six. We're gonna increase it by $2. Right, just like we're doing here, we're increasing the depreciation for these years by 12,000. Here, we're just gonna increase it by $2. So the expense now is gonna be six. So the earnings before taxes is gonna be four. And then the tax, still 40%, tax rate is still 40%. So four times 0 0.4 would give us 1.6. And then when we subtract these, we would end up getting 2.4. So if we look at how the net income got affected, notice that as we mentioned, as expected, it did go down, but how much did it go down by? It went down by 1.2. And notice that this 1.2 here, it's different than the amount the depreciation expense was increased by, which was $2. And so where's that difference coming from? Well, notice that we had tax savings. Because that depreciation expense was higher 
here. The earnings before taxes was lower compared to the six, which means our taxes were lower. So yes, we had an increase in expenses, but we also had an increase in tax savings. And netting those two out gave us this change in net income over here. So if we break down the change in net income, it's basically made of two components. So first is the depreciation expense. What's that going to do to net income? Well, we're adding an expense, so that's going to decrease the net income by two. But then we also, because we have a higher expense now, we have a lower earnings before taxes, so we actually end up having tax savings from the depreciation. And more specifically, what were the tax savings? Notice before we were paying 2.4 in taxes, now we're paying 1.6. So the tax savings were 0 0.8, the difference between these. So we had tax savings of 0 0.8. And so when we net those out, that change in net income would end up being um, negative 1.2, which is what we got over here. Now to get these tax savings here, we did it the long way here. I wanted to show you just visually how it works, but to get these tax savings, we could just take the depreciation and multiply it. Let me write it over here. So the tax savings from the depreciation is basically the depreciation times the tax rate, 40%. Right? If we take two, multiply it by 0 0.4, we end up with 0.8 over here. And so that's what's happening. Now, if you want to get to this number right away, the negative uh, 1.2, what you can do is you could actually take the depreciation and multiply it by after tax. So we could have took the 2, multiplied it by 1 minus 0 0.4, which would be 0 0.6 times 2, which would give us 1.2. So that's a quicker way of doing it. Uh, but it's a little less intuitive. I wanted to fully break it down for you, show you the components over here. But if you wanted to get it quickly, or some textbooks may even show it like this, and if you look at it like this, it may be tougher to understand to get your head wrapped around it versus here, it's nicely broken down for you. And so what I'm actually going to do is applying this here is I'm going to break it down. So what we're doing is we're taking these net incomes, we are subtracting the depreciation each year. Now remember the depreciation is happening in 2021, 2022, 2023. So what we're doing is we're subtracting the 12,000 in these years but then we are adding the tax savings. Because that expense is going to be higher, that earnings before tax is going to be lower, so we're going to pay less taxes. And what are the tax savings going to be in this case? Well, it's going to be the depreciation times the tax rate. Right? So 12,000 times 0 0.4 would give us 4,800. And if you net those two numbers out, this minus this, you'd end up getting negative 7,200. Not with the 50,000, just these two numbers. And you could get the 7,200 by taking 12,000 by using this, multiplying it by one minus 0.4, or 12,000 times 0.6 gives you 7,200. So that's what the net income would go down each year. But again, I just broke it down. So what would happen is we'd end up with new net income. Right, so the 2020 net income wouldn't change because the machine was bought at the end of that year. But then 2021, what would the new net income be? Well, when we net these two out, we would end up getting uh, 42,800. Right, the net income went down by 7,200. And then over here, 
if we do the same thing, we would end up with, um, what, 86, or uh, 76 rather, 800. All right, 84,000 minus 12,000 gives us 72,000 plus 4,800 gives us 76,800. And then over here, if we apply the same thing, we would end up with 112,800. Um, like that. $112,800. That is what the new net income would be for 2023. So this one didn't change. These are the new net incomes over here after we take into account that depreciation and that's how we break it down. Now they also asked us about the cash flow. Notice that this is not cash flow base. Cash flow is when there's an actual exchange of money and notice that depreciation, that's an expense, but there's no, you don't actually get cash or you don't pay cash for a depreciation expense. So if we just look strictly at cash flow, for each year, what would it be? What would the cash flow be for purchasing the machine, if you think about it? Well, we have to purchase the machine, so we're using cash for that, and the machine costs 36,000, so that was a negative cash flow in 2020, right? Assuming we paid cash for the machine. But what about these years? What is the change in cash flow? What's the cash flow that we're getting? Well, it's the tax savings, right? Our taxes went down by 4,800 each year. And so that means that we're paying less taxes. We're paying 4,800 less in taxes, which is a cash flow, assuming we're paying the taxes with cash. Right, so the cash flow in these years would just be the tax savings of 4,800. So that's if you're looking at everything from strictly a cash point of view. This is the, um, the view of the income statement, which is not just cash flow based, hence why there's another financial statement called the cash flow statement in addition to the income statement to show these types of transactions, right? So this is the change in net income. These are the new net incomes. If they ask you about cash flow with the machine purchase, these are the sets of cash flow.